Hey Crafty Family, it's me. Right now you're looking at my computer's desktop because today we're going to do something. I've been asked to do this a hundred thousand million times and most recently a friend was having trouble with um, some graphics so I thought now's the better, you know, no better time than now. Sorry, I'm drinking my tea. So what we're going to do today is, um, I know you're looking at a boring screen, but there's my there's my um, my mouse cursor, so keep an eye on that because you're going to need to keep an eye on that throughout what we're doing. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to step by step get graphics off the internet um, and adjust them so that you can print them out. Okay. Um, let me just start by saying that any graphics you get off of the internet do not mean that you can use them to sell any products you put them in. So if you're just using them for your own use, it's totally fine. If you're using it in swaps, it's totally fine. You're just trading, whatever. You're just, whatever. It's fine. But you can't, you know, I, there are sites out there where you can buy, you know, images that you can use in your stuff. And, um, I, you know, you could search for those and there's a lot out there. I've got, you know, I go to many of them. There's plenty of free places you can look for images that you can use that are copyright free, that are older, that you can use. And I go and I find a lot of those as well. But today, because most people don't use their stuff to sell, you know, most of us just like to make things or whatever, I'm going to show you how to download some images and pick the right images and what to look for so that your images aren't messed up. Because here's the thing, you know, some companies that are like, uh, there's a few companies that ha put like watermarks on their images. So you'll get it, you'll open it up, you'll download it onto your computer, then you'll open it and you'll see that it has a watermark on it and you don't see it initially sometimes. But and, you, and if you, or you'll go ahead and print it and find out that it's got a watermark on it and that kind of sucks. So I'll show you how to look for things um, and what to look for. So the first thing you're going to do is go to your internet and if you look down here, I am going to Google Chrome. I recommend you use Chrome. Um, double click and I'm going to open that up. Okay, so either here or up here, I'm hoping you are looking at my mouse as I wiggle it around here or here, it doesn't matter which or where, you're going to, like, let's say, you know, depending on what image you want to look for, whether this is on Pinterest or whatever, I do it on Google a lot of times because I can find, um, although there are sometimes better images on, on um, Pinterest, I find that on Google it's a little bit easier because I can figure out which photos are the right size pretty quickly, whereas, whereas on um Pinterest I can't and it's a little harder but you'll get used to it and I'll explain um, everything in a second so let's say we are looking for um, a picture a graphic of a pink poodle let's just put in pink poodle and you hit enter okay now here what comes up what comes up is just websites will usually first come up is mostly websites and you think oh well here's you can click here where it says images for pink poodle or right up here usually in this little bar if you're shopping for a pink poodle you'd click here if you're looking for maps to a pink poodle here videos here or images and I usually go to images because the first page all is going to bring up both images and websites um, so go to images and then it'll bring up all the images. So depending on what you're looking for, um, the first thing I want to explain is if you look as I mouse over each image, if you look at the bottom here, you'll see a number that says 310 by 325, 500 by 500, 236 by 236, 680 by 1024, 620 by 500. Do you see that? That is the size of the photo, okay? And so you're probably thinking, well, how big is that? What what size is what? I'm going to explain. That's how many pixels the photo is. Now, a photo is made up of pixels. Um, 
pixels are like little tiny dots. Um, and these photos, it depends on how many pixels they are to be how big they are. And it's hard to kind of determine. So we're going to download a few different ones and we're going to determine which one, you know, is the right size for you because you want to be able to have a picture. I mean, unless you're looking for a really small picture, which is fine. Otherwise, a lot of times you like to resize it, make it bigger, yada, yada. Um, so let's start with. Let's do something first I almost forgot to do. Uh, minimize by going up here and clicking on the minus sign up in the upper right corner. Do you see my mouse? Click on the minus side. Now, when you're back to your desktop, the best way to organize your graphics is to put folders on your desktop. It makes it so much easier. What I like to do is make a main folder, and if you right-click, that's not left-click. Not your, not the the button you click to double click, but the other button, the left one. If you if you or sorry, the right one. If you right click on your desktop and go down to New, and go to Folder. Okay, so let's do that again. You're going anywhere in the empty spot on your desktop. You're going to use your right button on your mouse, click once, not twice, and go to New, and go to Folder. And click it with the with the left button once just click it once and now you have a folder and you can name it it since the 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 words are blue so you can name it graphics whoops i must have hit the button <laughs> dang it you can also right click on it and go to rename and name it anyway and then hit enter and it'll be graphics there it is so now this is where you download your graphics into. You can also make subfolders. You can go in here, go to new, and you can make the folder poodles since, since we're looking for poodles. You see what I mean? So now you have another folder within a folder. So you can do this as many times as you want. You can have 6,000 folders within folders. What I recommend you do is have a main folder, name it graphics on your desktop. And then every time you look for a specific type of file, whether it's vintage or oriental or steampunk or poodles or cats or any kind of graphic you're looking for, put a subfolder in the graphics file with the name of the thing so that you don't just have random graphics just in this file that is going to be ridiculous to look through as you get more and more graphics in there it's going to be really hard to dig through those graphics if they're not named in separate folders take advantage of the fact that you can put as many folders in here as you want so make a whole bunch of folders and well what i do is just every time i'm looking at, oh i need some steampunk folders or, or steampunk graphics i'll go into my i'll do this i'll go into my graphics folder and then i'll right click i'll hit new i'll go to folder and i'll put steam Steampunk. Now I have a Poodles folder and a Steampunk folder. You see what I mean? It makes it a lot easier. So we're going to X out of these for right now. Now we've got our graphics folder right there. You can move it around wherever you want. You know, sometimes if, you, if yours likes to go to a specific spot and it seems they always migrate over to like one side, you can right click and if you go to view right here, um, you can leave it on medium icons, but then right here, you can uncheck all of these boxes except for the ones that say show desktop icons, obviously. But sometimes auto arrange is on or align to grid, and that makes them all go where they want to go instead of where you want to put them. And I like to put my folders in weird places sometimes, so I like to be able to move them around. So that's what I do. Anyway, we're going off track. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to here. Let me just get this other graphic out of the way. We're going to go back to our poodles. And let's say we like this poodle. So we are going to, again, right click, not the double click button, not the left click button. But we're going to right click and hit open in link in new tab. And that's going to open it up here. So you can switch between the two. Okay, because sometimes when you're getting graphics, you want, you're like, oh, I like that one. 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 And when you like a lot of them, it's easier to just open all the ones you like in tabs and then go through and download them. It's kind of like an assembly line. 
So let's say we're going through and we like this one. We're going to open it in a new tab. Let's say we like this one. We're going to right click and open it in a new tab. Let's say we like this one. We're going to open it in, in a new tab. And we're just going to keep doing this. See all the tabs at the top up here? Doesn't matter. You can have as many as you want. I mean, I usually only let like 20 of them open and then I'll go through and download just to get rid of the tabs. But, you know, you just go through. Here's another one. Opening it up in a new tab. You don't have to do it this way. You can just open it up in a new tab, go right to it, and then do the next step, which I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to open this in a new tab as I want it. I'm going to go to, uh, let's go to this one. Open it in a new tab. Let's see what else we got. Open that one in a new tab. Okay, let's say I've got enough I've got enough images. So now you go up to those tabs and you go start with the first one and you take your image. Now keep in mind this one says 236 by 236. That's the size. Okay. And this one actually comes from Pinterest, by the way. But it'll because it, it'll Google all, you know pictures from all over the internet, including Pinterest. Um, so 236 by 236. Now what you do is when you, you know, you're ready to download the image, you right click again, go to save image as, okay, save image as, and that'll bring up your folder system on your computer. If you look in the left pane, you see desktop. Okay, so you, that means your desktop is open right here. Scroll down and you find your graphics folder. There it is. Now you can just put it in your graphics folder or if you have a, a subfolder, Poodles, you can put it in there. So for the sake of this, I'm going to name it what the size is because I want to remember what the size is. You don't have to do that. This part is just for me. It's for demonstration purposes. You would just not even name it anything and just hit save. Okay. So you wouldn't have to rename anything. You're just going to hit save unless you really want to rename every one of your photos. Um, but you wouldn't do anything. I'm just doing that so that I can tell you the difference between what this number is so I can remember which picture was which number. Do you know what I mean? I just need to know what size it is off the hand, like really quickly. So there, that one's saved and you'll see it downloads down here and you could just leave that alone and then you can X out of that picture. Okay. Then you go to this one, you right click it and you go to save image as it'll bring up a box. Now it'll automatically go into the last box the last folder that you just opened. So it automatically is going to go into your Poodle folder if that's what you opened last. Now, of course, if you don't want it to, you can go back to your desktop, go down to graphics if, it, if it's a different image and you want to put it in a different folder or just put it in graphics and there it is. But it's automatically going to open the last folder that you had open to save in. So you don't have to worry about it. And like I said, you don't have to rename it. You could just hit save. Okay, you could just hit save, but from, you know, you wouldn't have to touch this and rename it. You would just hit save. I'm renaming it because I want to keep track of what the image sizes are for my, for teaching purposes. But normally I would not do that. Normally I wouldn't bother renaming it. So I'm going to click, I'm going to X out of that. So here's another one. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go save image as. And this one already has the, the, the number in it right here. So I don't have to rename it. So I do just what I normally would do and just hit save. And then I'd X out of it. I right click. I go save image as pink poodle. Now I would normally, if I wasn't teaching you what, what I'm doing, I would normally just hit save and go on to the next image. But because I want to teach you something, I need to know what the sizes are. 
hundred. Thirty. I just need to know quickly. Okay. X out of it. Next. Save image as. Okay. X out of it. It goes by really fast, especially if you're not having to rename the things like I am right now. Um. Plus, you can just hit save. You wouldn't have to do anything else. And then X out of it. Then here's another one. Well, here's, here's one that I want to explain something. Most of the time, when you get to this point, you'll be able to see if it's an image that is a, has a watermark. Most of the time, when it's, uh, when it's got this little thing down here, and you can usually see that from the Google site, like where it says it has this little at symbol on it. That usually means it's from this company like Dreams Time or there's another company too. But see the watermarks on it and you can see the watermarks on it and the lines going through it. You don't want this image. So what I would do is just X out of it and say, oh, well, can't, can't get that image and X out of it and not save it. Okay. Okay, one more. Save image as. 300 by 300. And save. So now you're done, unless you want to keep going and get more and more and more. That's up to you. Um, I'm just going to minimize that for now. So now the next step is to open up Microsoft Word. This is where we're going to, let's pretend now that you want to print out your images. Um, if you don't want to print them out yet, you don't have to do anything else. You have your graphics. You could save them for later or whatever. Um, but let's say you want to print something out. You go to Microsoft Word. You open this up. Make sure that your grid lines are showing. Now, sometimes when you open it up, the grid lines aren't showing. In order to get that to happen, if you look over here on the right, I believe it's here. Yeah, it says View Ruler. Make sure you click that if you need to. See it over here where my mouse is moving because I know my mouse can look small sometimes on a bigger computer. If you're, if you know, you might not be able to see it very well. So that's why I'm doing all this. Look at my mouse. Um, yeah. So over here where it says View Ruler, I can either make it disappear or make it come back. Make it disappear, make it come back. You want it to be there. And once you put it there, generally every time you open Word, it'll it'll be there. So as you see, it sets these margins and it has plenty of room to the left and to the right. Only where the white is is where it's going to print. So that leaves a lot of paper left over. Well, I don't I don't do I don't dig that. I don't go for that. I like to move my margins over. So I'll start with the top one on the left and this one is the hardest one because for some reason it's like a video game. You have to get it in the right spot. See how the arrow pops up? Like pay attention right here. You have to kind of get, like, because if you just get the bottom, hold on, if you just get the bottom, it won't move, but you could do this. You could do it this way, move it one at a time, each little piece, but the most important part is this white part here. See what happens is that that part moves all the way over there, then you have to move it back, and it's got to all be lined up. So the best way to do it is to try to get it to try to get the arrow to show up, the little double arrow. Here, I'll show you over here because it shows up a lot easier. Right here, see that? On the right over here, this little double arrow, that's what you want to show up because then it moves everything and you want to move it and just leave yourself. You see the dotted line right coming right here? When I click on that with the left button, you can see the dotted line. You want to leave yourself just a hair just a hair of space. Same with over here. Just a hair of space. But here, you see what I mean? Like, you, it's hard to get the... There it is. See the left margin? Now you can move it all at once. Okay? So you're just going to leave yourself a hair. And then over here to the left, right here on the side, you're going to move this up. Leave yourself a hair. 
and then you're going to scroll down i'm scrolling down scrolling down to the bottom of the page and once again you're going to leave a margin so you're going to do four different places you're going to do at the very bottom at the very top left um, and then at the top left of the actual paper and the top right of the paper so it's four different places you have to move the ruler and you probably have to do this every time you open up your word because it'll snap back to the other way there is a way to set it permanently but i just i'm so used to doing it this way oh sorry i need a drink when i'm talking this much okay so now the next step is to get your images in here the easiest way i found to do this is to see up here in the top right you got your minimize you got your x out and then you got this one which is like the the restore thing or store down or store up or whatever just hit that and it'll make it smaller and then you can kind of move it around to find your file so that your file is kind of uncovered so there you go open if it's you know if it's sitting in and you can't get to your file to double click on it just move it over and if you need to resize the box you can just take your mouse and move the put it on the edges and you can move it in and out if you need to and then once you hit that middle button again it'll pop back out to full size so what we're going to do is open up your graphics and then open double click on your poodles because that's where your poodles are and you move those over right then you go back this is how you toggle your windows you got one here you could move it you got one here and as long as they're both at this size where they're not fully maximized like this and you have them minimized you could toggle between them now you don't have to leave them both small because it's easier to work in word if, if that one's maximized so what i do is i open the folder with the graphics that i want and then i go back to word and once you click on that top part it'll you know it brings whichever one forward that you click on now i'm doing i'm speaking like this because i know there are people that that are older and that don't know how to use the computer and that aren't really good with all this stuff so i'm trying to kind of cover everything that i can think of that might make it easier for you and trust me once you do this it's really easy really really easy obviously you need to make sure that your printer is hooked up to your computer and all that stuff um but anyway so we're going to open now that we've got our files click and open and if i click here it opens you just click once the only time you have to double click on your computer is when you're opening a folder you don't have to double click to open links. You don't have to double click any time unless you're opening a program or a folder off your desktop or whatever. That's it. It's the only time you need to double click. Um, anyway, so now we're going to maximize by hitting the middle button here. We're going to maximize your Microsoft Word. Make it big again. Now, if you look down in your toolbar down here, this is your toolbar, this bar here where your time is and your date. This gray bar at the bottom, that's called the toolbar. Now, if you look at it, you're going to see the things that are open. And my, we have Microsoft Word open. I have OBS open because that's what I'm using to record with. There's your internet. And then this file right here is open. If you click on it, look at that. It comes on top of here. Obviously, if you click on Microsoft Word, this, is gonna dis this, this box here is going to disappear behind it again. Watch. Oh, where'd it go? Just go down to the little folder right here, down in the bottom, right here on the left. Click on it. There's the folder. Oh, and if you click on that again, it goes away. So you can click on the folder, make it appear. Click on the folder, make it disappear. Easy, right? You can click on your internet. Whoop, there it is. Click on it again. There it goes. You see what I'm saying? These, are, these buttons are great um, for being able to toggle between things. There's your internet. I got Microsoft Word up here, but if I click on the Microsoft Word little button, it goes away and I'm back to my desktop. So you can toggle between things by using those buttons. There's my OBS, which will just show that's what I record on. Um, so anyway, so we open our file. I'm going to make this file box, which again, you can adjust it by putting your mouse in the corners and it makes a double arrow and then clicking on your... Uh, on your left button and dragging it and you can make it whatever size you want i'm just gonna make it a little smaller okay so let's say we want to we like this one here or this colorful one we are going to take the graphic 
we are going to click on it with our left button and we are going to just drag it hold that button down hold the left button down until you get to here and it looks like there's nothing there but if you lift up your hand off the button voila there it is look at that so let's do that again i'm going to cut that away there was no delete for some reason there's just cut it's so weird i'm going to go back to whoops i'm going to go back to the folder i'm going to Click with the left button, drag, 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 holding it down, and then unlift my finger up, like unclick it. And then there's your poodle. Now, the size that it goes into Word is the maximum size that it can be, nine times out of ten. Very rarely can you ever expand it and it not end up fuzzy. That's the trick here. This photo said like 300 by 300, right? No, 236, you see it right here? 236 by 236. That means it's a small photo. It may be 236 by 236, but that's, that, that's actually small when it comes to pixel size, all right? It's 236 by 236. So that's it which is only, look, if you look at your ruler up at the top of Word, two and a half inches by two and a half inches. So it's going to be fairly small. That's it. If you take it, which you can do this, you click on, if you click on the picture to make it show up, you see the little dots around the picture? If you put your mouse over them, you get that double arrow, and that means you can pull it. Now, you see how it looks fuzzy now? It doesn't look as clear and sharp as it did before. And even if you just open it a little bit, it's still, it may not look too bad, but when you print it, you're going to notice a difference. So it was meant to be two and a half by two and a half. You might be able to get away with a half an inch to go to three inches. Maybe it's not going to be perfect. I can even tell from here that it's a little bit fuzzier, but you may be able to get away with it depending on what you're using it for. I wouldn't push it though. I would leave the photo at its original or smaller. You can always go smaller and that will not decrease the quality. So if you want it to be an inch and a half by an inch and a half, you, there's your ruler and it'll stay good quality. You can always shrink, but you cannot enlarge. If you enlarge it, that's when it's going to start getting fuzzy. So basically it's like taking it's like taking a photograph and stretching it apart. Like what happens when you, you know how, all right, do you know how you play with Play-Doh, or not Play-Doh, Silly Putty. Remember when you were a kid, you'd take Silly Putty and you would put it onto a newspaper or comic strip, and then you would take the Silly Putty up and the comic strip would be on there. What happens when you'd stretch that Silly Putty? The picture gets all warped and out of focus, right? That's the same concept. So, you can always shrink it down, but you cannot always make it bigger because it just starts getting fuzzier and fuzzier. And now look at it. Can you tell how fuzzy it is? And it's going to print even worse. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Um, okay. So that's a small picture. I'm going to cut this out. And I don't know why you, there's no delete. It's stupid. I don't know. Is there a delete here? Uh, no. It doesn't look like there's a delete on these. <coughs> Excuse me. So I just cut. I just say cut all the time. All right. So let's go to another picture. Let's go to this picture. This one here is supposed to be like a background, but it's already like sometimes this will happen. Sometimes you'll download a photo because you think it's going to be okay. It doesn't have a watermark on it, but look how fuzzy it is. And I didn't even, it's at, it's at its original. It's at its original normal size, but look how fuzzy and kind of weird it looks. It's not very nice looking in my opinion. And obviously if you tried to stretch it out, look how bad it looks. Somebody scanned it or took a photo of it or did something. And, eat, and no matter how much shrinking, it's not going to look any better. So you might as well, if you get a photo that looks like that and it's just all kind of fuzzy and weird looking, it doesn't look nice, 
it's going to print however it looks on the screen. So I just cut it and say, okay. And a lot of times I'll go to the actual file and I'll delete it. Right click on it, hit delete, get it out of my file so I don't look at it again. You know what I mean? It's, it's not worth it. And the same with this one. This is one, uh, well, no, I don't know about this one. Wait, hold on. Let's go to, let's go to this one. I'm going to click it and I'm going to drag it. This one again is 300 by 300. It's at its maximum where it'll look still normal. If I go any bigger, it looks, look at, you can tell it's fuzzy, right? It's not, it doesn't have that sharp image. So you don't want to, you can always make them smaller, but you can't always make them bigger. So if you're okay with the size, like if you're looking for it to be like a six inch by six inch photo, this isn't going to be the one for you. You know what I mean? So that's how you know, like 300 by 300. When you see an image that says 300 by 300, know that you're going to get like a two and a half inch, maybe three inch, like, you know, photo, probably two and a half inch, right? Because we're at I think that's what it start. Let me see. Let me let me go back to what it was originally by bringing it back in here. Yeah, so it's about 300. Yeah, so 300 by 300 is about three inches. So you can go by that. Okay, that's how much you could stretch it to is by how many how many hundred of inches it how many hundred pixels it is. So if the dimension on the photo that you get is 300 by 300 take that three and say three inches by three inches okay that's a good way to determine you're not going to get any more than three inches by three inches if that's fine for you then take it okay same with let's say here we go we've got one here that's a thousand by a thousand so that means it's 10 inches by 10 inches it can be stretched to right so this photo here it says it can be 10 inches by 10 inches but why did it get to me and it's only a little over two inches. Remember that exception I said? I said most of the time when you get when the image pops in, it's going to be at its maximum size. But there are exceptions. Sometimes a really large file, and this one's pretty large if it's 10 inches. If it can be stretched beyond what it is in Microsoft Word, which is eight and a half by, well, you get over 10 inches here. But it'll sometimes shrink it down, and you have to do this. Well, but see, this one's fuzzy, so this must be a bad one, too. I don't know why that was that. Well, that's a bad example. Let me show you another one. That's a bad example. That's a 10-inch that's a by 10-inch fuzzy photo is what that is. Let's go with this one. See how big this one is? It came in as big and maximized, and it can actually go bigger. But, obviously, it's, it's held up by the parameters. Sometimes you'll get a big picture and it'll come in small and you're like, well, that was a thousand by a thousand. That's 10 inches by 10 inches. You can stretch that out. Um, sometimes it does. Most of the time it won't. That's why I was confused on that one because it didn't, but it was already fuzzy. So it was a crappy picture to begin with. Um, that rarely happens. Rarely will you download a 1000 by 1000 photo and it be crappy quality. Very rarely. That's one of the instances where, you know, that's a shocker. But anyway, here's this photo. It's really nice. It's already, you know, very large. Um, it's as large as pretty much you're going to get it. You could probably go a little larger that way and bring it in a little smaller this way if you wanted. But anytime you stretch your picture too much, you notice how it starts to get distorted? Because obviously if you stretch your picture like this, it looks funny, right? So you want to kind of keep some cohesiveness with how you're stretching out your photos. So you don't want to stretch it, stretch it too much one way without stretching it the other way. Do you know what I mean? Try to use this here. The corner box stretches both sides equally so that it looks normal. Um, if you stretch it with using the sides, it's going to stretch just that side. So it's going to stretch it more down this way and it's going to look longer. Do you know what I mean? So you want to stretch it using the corner and then you can get it to a size that it doesn't look, you know, that it doesn't look too wonked out. So here's where it was a large picture. Say we don't need it that large. We want it to be like four by four for like a little notebook or something. You can snap it to your grid line here and here, and it could be a four by four 
picture. And if you need to, like if it's not exactly four, you can move it up just a little bit. That's not going to hurt it too much. You're not going to notice that if you have to move one side or the other. Um, you can also crop the photo, which is where you just cut out the basically around the poodle. And by for doing that, you would go to Format up here where it says Picture Tools. And then over here, it says Crop. So you go to format and then crop, click on crop. And then all of a sudden you'll notice, if you look at my mouse, you'll notice a little shape on my mouse and you'll notice around the picture, they have these little frames. So if you take that and drag it in to where you want it, oh, automatically that happens. And then you take this and you drag it in. There you go. Now you've cropped the photo. Now, since it was a large photo, you should be able to stretch it out a little bit. I wouldn't push your luck too much since we did crop a lot of it out and you're not exactly sure how much the ratio should be. You should be able to crop it out. Obviously, look at it. If it looks fuzzy, then don't do it. But if you want the poodle to be 4x4 four four, and you wanted to crop it a little to get it so that you're just focused on the poodle, you can do that. So. Let's say you cropped it, you're ready to go, and you want to print this file. Let's say you want to save it like this. You don't want to save it like the other file, which was, you know, had all that filler around it. You go up here to the top left, up to this little button here, and you go to Save As. Okay? Save As. Save as a Word document. Don't worry about these down here. Always save it as the top one, which is a Word document. Then it's going to bring up a box, and it's going to say, where do you want to save it, basically? So, <coughs> Sorry, I'm choking. <laughs> so this is where you're going to go back to your desktop, which is on the left. Start on the left. Go to the right box. Scroll down so you'll see your graphics file. There it is. Double click double click poodles and you can name your file if you want pink poodle and then click save and there you go this way you could print it out if you ever want to print it out like this now it's going to save it as a word document and not an image file okay um so every time you open it, it's always going to be in a Word document. It's not going to be the image itself. If you want to do that, that's a whole other, a whole other video. If you want it to just be the image file, um, it's going to be in a Word document. So you have to, you could print it out from here, whatever, but it's going to be in the Word document. So, but see, for my purposes, that's fine by me. I don't care. So let's say I want, I have all this paper. To, to use. Let's say I want to add another photo. So I'm going to click on the file and here we go. I've got this one here which look if you look at the the number I put underneath of it it's 2,251 by 2,800 which means that that is like 22 inches by 28 inches. So it's going to be a huge file. So obviously when I drag it, oh you didn't see what I did. Um, I clicked it and I dragged it in, but where'd it go? It's not here, right? That's because it was too big to fit right next to this poodle on this line. So, and it was too big to fit in this, the rest of this piece of paper. Like it was just too big. So what'd it do? It fit itself onto another, the other next page. But if you don't need it to be this big and you want it to fit up next to this poodle or just on this page somewhere, you just have to resize it. See how big it is? It's huge. And it could go bigger, obviously, but our papers, we're limited by what our paper size is. So this one, we're going to go to the corner. Any one of the corners will do this. And you'll see the double arrow, and we're going to size it down. Size it down. And then, oh, where'd that second page go? It disappeared because it didn't need the second page anymore because this page was adequate. So we're going to size it and put it next to, you can leave it this big if you wanted to print it this big. But we're going to keep resizing it down. Oh, and there it goes. Now, if you look, the edge of the paper is over here where this, if you click on this line, is over here where this line is, where that dotted line is. 
So if I want to, I can take the corner of this and drag it out even further. This one, will, it'll come down a little bit. So that is dragged out almost to the edge there. And then we've got this one and this one. Now, if I want to put more photos and fill up this page, what I would do is put my cursor, which is the little this little line thing on my mouse, over to the right side of the top, you know, the image all the way to the top. And so you see it blinking next to, you know, all the way next to the image at the bottom of this image, the image all the way, you know, on the right up at the top or whatever line that you want to. And then if you hit shift, if you just hit enter, it'll skip a line. So it'll actually go here and you've got this space right here. And I know that sounds silly and why do you need that space? But if you want it to go directly under here so that you don't waste any space, I'm going to backspace. So now it's over here again, it's blinking. Hit, hold down the shift button and click enter. If you hold down the shift button and click enter, look what happens. It goes here. So that gives you space for images. And that sounds silly, but believe me, you're going to want to maximize your space, especially if you're using photo paper or something that's expensive. Um, okay, so now we're going to add another image. So we're going to click and drag. Let's click and drag this image in. And it goes right here. Now this one was another big one. Here's a good example. Okay, this one was 1600 by 1600, which means 16 inches by 16 inches. And it only showed up like a little out over five inches. This can be made, let's see, but there we go. Let's see, this can be made larger and it's still perfectly clear. So this is one of the examples I was saying how sometimes they show up, you know, but it depends on the size of the image. Um, this one can be made bigger, so it showed up, it ended up showing up smaller, but, you know, it's one of those images that is large enough where you can stretch it out. So, but I'm going to make it small enough to fit on my page, like so, and let's say, let's say we just need it to be a small image like that. So let's go back in and get another image. We've got our blinking cursor right to the, to the bottom right of the last photo we just put in. We always want to have it blinking right to the last photo we just put in so that we can put another photo next to it. I'm going to go back to the folder and we're going to pull in this picture. And there it is. And let's say we want that one to be about that size. Okay, good. Because that one's 400 by 400 so we can only shrink it. We can't make it bigger. Now we're going to put our cursor again, even though we know a photo is not really going to fit here, it'll automatically go to the next line. Or if there's not enough room, like here, it's going to go to the next page. So we'll go there, we'll go down here and get a photo. We will get, let's get this one again. Now this one went to the next page. Now, if you only need, if you don't, you know, obviously you can start a whole new page, you can add... What I like to do is, if I know I needed to download all these poodles at these sizes and I needed them like this, and I knew that one of them went to another page. Now, if I was just using regular copy paper, I probably wouldn't do this. But if I'm using photo paper or cardstock, I'm going to go through my other graphics, and I'm just going to I'm just going to put a bunch of other graphics on here just to fill up this page so that it's not wasted. So even if I don't need the photos now, that's how I end up with so many graphics that you've seen me pull out folders and folders of graphics. It's because I do this. If I only need these pictures and this one happens to go on this page, I'm going to go find a bunch of random graphics of vintage ladies or steampunk or, you know, mermaids or unicorns that are in my graphic files. And I'm going to put them all in here and make a bunch of them fit at some sort of generic size like four by four three by three and you know that i use a lot of and i'm going to put them in here um that's just what i do but let's just for poops and giggles say that we're going to make this poodle really small for some reason we're going to make it fit on that page even though probably normally wouldn't do this and i could probably resize them because he'll go back on this page and then you can kind of resize them if you see that he's not reaching so there you go we got a bunch of them. 
Now this, we might be able to fit more of these because I want to show you another, another example. Um, if you want to make different sizes of the same picture, you can go, put your mouse over a photo, right click on it, hit copy, and then go to the right of that photo if it's on the edge. And again, shift and enter to go to the next line. And then near that cursor, right click and hit paste. And there it is. But this time, it's an exact copy, right? Well, this time, if you want it to be slightly smaller because you're not sure what's going to fit, you make it slightly smaller. Then you right click again and you hit paste and you get another one. And let's say you make that one even smaller because you're not sure. You're doing a project and you need like a small stuffed poodle to sit in a shadow box or something, but you're not exactly sure of the size. Well, this is how you do it. You hit paste again. This one you make even smaller and you're like, well, one of these are going to fit. I'm going to fussy cut, figure out when I, when I print it out, I'll figure out which one I need. And so you could do that too. I do that a lot because it's easier than trying to measure because it never comes out right. It's just easier to print out a bunch of them in different sizes and then figure it out after I have the paper in my hand. It's just easier. So let's say you're all done. You got your graphics on your sheet. You know, let's say you're just doing the one sheet, whatever. So then you go up to print, and now this is where your printer is going to be different than my printer. You're going to print, and you're going to put your settings how you want your settings to be. You want them to be on the best settings. Now, this I don't think I have a printer hooked up to this computer, so that may be an issue. Um, let me just see real quick. If I do have a printer, I can quickly put into this computer. I don't want to stop and have to... Bear with me, in other words, because I don't want to have to edit this if I don't have to. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, there we go. View device and printers. It should pick up my printer. It is. Okay, goody. Oh, it is hooked up already. Well, dang. Okay, so it's already hooked up. Didn't have to worry about it. Anyway, go up here to this little button up in the top left. Go to print, go up here to print, and then it's going to bring up your printer that you have. You do not have the same printer as me, so the settings are going to be slightly different from here on out. This, um, this uh, window right here might be the same, but if you go to properties, it's going to bring you the properties of your specific printer, which is probably going to be different than mine unless you have an HP printer just like mine. So I go to properties and I go and I adjust my quality here. So I put the paper type. If I'm using cardstock, I usually just put like HP matte. I usually put photo paper unless I'm using copy paper. If I'm using copy paper, I leave it on plain paper. But if I'm using any kind of photo paper or cardstock, I will put it on HP photo papers. I'll put the print quality on best or fine or extra fine the best quality that you have that's what you're going to put it on okay and then the rest of these i leave alone and then i click okay and then i click okay here and then it'll go to my printer and it'll print which it's going to do right now so that's it that's what you do now if you want if you like this configuration of of photos let's say you know you because once i click out of here it's going to ask me if i want to save this file because obviously we're in microsoft word it's this is a file um it's making like a, a word file so you can do one of two things if you want to now go and get new photos and print other photos you can put your cursor at the bottom photo the bottom graphic that you have and just hit start hitting backspace and erase and if you just hold it down for in two seconds all of these will disappear so you can just start adding new photos to it like if you have more photos you want to print out or if you want to save this configuration to print it out later let's say you like these photos you like the sizes of them you're happy with these you think you'll use them again go up to the top left hit save as and you can 
save it as like we did before save it as pink poodle pink poodle 2 and then you'll always have this configuration so if i x out of this um it'll ask you if you placed a large amount of text in the clipboard remember i was right clicking and hitting cut 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 well it's going to my clipboard because it couldn't delete it i just say no just say no because i was just trying to delete it anyway um you go to your graphics file right you know double click on that double click on poodles and then you've got these two word files this is the one that we just saved and this will always have these graphics at this size right here if you don't want to do that you don't have to but they're here or you can just backspace and there you go now you can take new files and start dropping in new files and I'm really fast at it so I can I can do very quickly get my files where I want them to be you see what I mean like it doesn't once you get used to it it really does not take long to to get your files off of the off of the computer onto word and then printed You shift and enter make a new line because if you don't make sure the cursor is on that's another thing if you just have all right let me show you if you just have this one picture and you have it like this where the cursor is not here see the cursor is right there you see it blinking right next to the photo and let's say you do this and you take a photo and you drag it Oh, it did it this time. It made me look like a liar. Sometimes it, you'll do that, and this picture will, will be in this spot, and this picture will be gone. It'll, like, overlap, and it'll just be gone. So it's just best to make sure the cursor is always blinking when you put a picture down. It just makes it easier, and you can move your box around if you need to and, like, you know, do that. And then if it's a big one, you know, you're going to have to size it down. To get it to go on that page size it down further like you just need to finagle if it if you want it to be a little bigger but then you have space up here for a smaller picture you can go in whoops wrong window go in find another small one i don't need two of these open find another small one to put there and just go like that and then and that'll go up here Finagle with it. Play with it. You're not going to hurt anything. I suggest that you go in, play around with it. The only thing you really can't do with this is and the thing that sucks. And I wish Word, I don't know, maybe the newer version of Word does this. I don't know. I have like an old version of Word. It is like click on the picture and drag it to where you want it. You can kind of do that to a point. Okay, but it depends on the size of the picture. So you can kind of do that. But you can't like move this picture over here because it won't go. You have to just put another picture here. Do you know what I mean? Like it won't let you drag it on the same line, but it'll let you drag it to another line. And if there's not enough room, it'll go underneath of it. See? So like it does weird things. Like when you do that, you can't just arrange it however you feel like it. But, you know, you, you'll get used to it. Just play with it. But anyway, this is a really long video, and I'm hoping this helps you understand how to get graphics, how to put them in Word. You know, you can use a, a, a photo or graphic editor. Absolutely. If you have one and you know how to use it really well, go ahead. I have one. I know how to use it. I still prefer this way, and I've been using this way for about eight years now. I love this way of doing it because it's just easy. It's a no-brainer. Now, yes, if you need to do any photo adjusting, you kind of can a little bit. Like, let's say you want to adjust this photo. Click on it. And if you right-click on it, here's a menu that pop pops up. You can go to Format Picture. And here you can adjust the brightness, the contrast. You can, um, you can recolor the picture. And here's some color modes you can use. So if you wanted to make it like this weird gray color, or you can do this to it. You can do this to it and make it like blue. 
you can make it that color like you can do things to it you just you know you just can't do a ton to it or you can just hit reset picture and it resets the picture what happened to it or it just makes it disappear it gets oh i think it reset it back to its normal size which was huge yep anyway sometimes it takes a bit to size these pictures down because it likes to get so big that it goes off the page you just got to do it a little at a time don't know why it's doing that i think it reset it to its full size anyway but you can do some minor editing of your photo um i'll do this one you can do some minor minor editing let's see what happens when i click yeah it just does weird things um i don't know much about this stuff but you can play with it um you can do this and then there was something else you can format it up here so you can click on make sure you're by clicking on the picture you've selected that picture when you see the little dots around it that means you have selected that picture to work on so you can do things to it like put it in a circle put it in a square with a frame so you could do these things to it put like a blurry line around it. So you can do some things um you just can't do like a complete ton of things to do with it you can do like a 3d rotation of the picture like that so i mean yeah you could totally do things to the picture but it's up to you what you want to do anyway anyway i've gone on too too long i hope this helps I hope this helps you with my way of doing things. I know that, that you might have, if you're already more of an expert, you will have, this is not for the expert user. This is not for somebody that already knows how to do this, already knows how to use a picture editor. They know, like, as I know how to use the picture editor too, but for me, this is the fastest way for me to get images in and print them so that I can utilize my page and get the most prints on one page so not to waste paper. That's what I do this for. I do not use this to edit my photos. I can do minor things like crop a photo, but if I'm gonna edit a photo and change the color scheme of it completely and do like different photo editing to it, I'm gonna use a photo editor, obviously. Um, this is mostly what I use just to resize it real quick for printing purposes. That's it. That's the only reason I do it this way because for me, it's quicker and easier and I find myself doing this. I've used plenty of ed other editors before and they all took me forever to do and I could not do what I wanted to do. And this was the only thing that I was able to do it quickly and get as many photos as I could on one piece of paper so not to waste my photo paper. You know, it's just easier. Oh my God, if I talk anymore, my voice box is going to fall out. Anyway, I'm done. I'm, I'm sure this helped you. I hope, I don't know if it, I'm, I can't say it, I'm sure it helped you. I hope it helped you, but please don't yell at me in the comments. Well, I use this and I use that. I don't care what you use. I get it. This is not for everybody. This is what I use. And this is to help people that want to do things the way I do it, which in my opinion is quick. Because believe me, I can have photos, I can have six pages of photos in about a minute and a half to print out. Like that's how fast I am at doing this. I can resize them, get them onto this page and end up making six pages to print out of graphics to use in my project literally in minutes. Whereas if I use any other photo editor, it takes me a long time. This is just a very fast way if you don't need to do a lot of heavy editing on your photos or anything like that, this is just a fast way to grab some pictures, put them in here and then print them. And then you can just, if you don't want to save them, just X out and then it'll say, do you want to save it? Nope. I don't care. You can just move on and make another one the next time. Or just, you know, if you saved it, you got them in your file or just open up a new, a new word, go back and fix your little rulers and, you know, do the whole thing where you, move your rulers over it takes a couple seconds this is the hardest one here on the upper left get it move it over drag it here leave a little space 
drag it down here and now I'm ready to throw some photos on here and print so that's what I do anyway I hope this helped let me know if you have any questions about this process um, if there's anything else you'd like to see I hope this helps you get your graphics again I'm not responsible for any graphics you download that affect your computer or whatever which I've never downloaded a graphic that hurt my computer ever in my entire life but I'm just saying if you download something weird off the internet and because you're trying to download a graphic if you just download a graphic you're not going to get a virus um, is very unlikely but if you click on some weird link that's not my fault don't yell at me just stick to images if you that's why you just need to go to images file when you go here like up here at the top if you go to all you're going to end up with links and all these links I can't guarantee what they are but if you just go to images if you can see the image in front of you again hello computer you can go to images these are not going to contain a virus okay it'll be very 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 rare that there would be ever a virus in an image file I've never had it happen but then again you should have a virus protection on your computer which I have somewhere on my computer um, you should definitely have virus protection on your computer at all times yada yada you know that um, but anyway I hope this helped. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And also check out my Patreon. Um, it's a way that you can support my channel and get free like goodies and there's live classes and all kinds of good stuff. There's a secret Facebook group and all kinds of fun stuff there's also a facebook group that's completely free which is my pink poodle pack creative crafty playground on facebook the link for that is also below so that's it have a great rest of your day i know all you're seeing is a mouse scribbling across the screen but i don't have my camera oh yes i do actually hold on you can see the mess that's on my desk woohoo so there you go. Look at that. I forgot. I could switch it. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I'm tired. It's late. But anyway, have a great rest of your week. I will talk to you later. Bye.